It's Buds Week, which means every day a new review of a truly wireless pair of earbuds today with the Bowers & Wilkins PI5 Truly Wireless ANC Earbuds. These are $250 at a starting price, which is fancier than most of the other earbuds that I've been testing the last couple months, which puts them right up against the AirPods Pro. But how do they compare and what do I think about them? This is NOISO and this is the Bowers & Wilkins PI5 review. Can we add some sort of intro roll or animation for Buds Week? We can't afford it? Then why do we keep on buying these earbuds? Let's start with the design of the case. The case is a taller shape that kind of reminds me of like a scuba tank, which has a top open that is quite different from the treasure chest style cases that I've gotten used to. I don't mind it too much, but I will say that the top part of the case is glossy where the bottom case is matte, which is a little bit inconsistent. And the case itself has a tendency to close on its own without you actually pressing down on it, which can get a little frustrating at times. The buds have a strong enough magnet so, such that they're not going to fall out on their own, even with a lot of shaking. I've been able to take them out of the case and put them in with one hand, but it's really difficult to be able to do so just because of how, how strong the magnets are. So I will say this fails the one hand opening test. Then in terms of the buds themselves, they actually have these big metal kind of bars on the outside these kind of metal nubs that make them very easy to hold on to without accidentally pressing the edges or the back in order to control the audio. These are pretty nice and they don't jut out of your ear too much, but they do look quite different than many other earbuds on the market and it is noticeable. When I asked my girlfriend for her fashion advice, she said she can't decide whether she loves them or hates them, which I think is going to be the reaction for most people. I don't mind them personally, and I've gotten used to them in my ears over time, and I frankly appreciate being able to easily grab them using the silver nubs. The stem of the earbuds is relatively average size, such that it doesn't go too deeply into my ear to make it uncomfortable, but it does create a pretty good seal for noise isolation. I think over long periods of time, I had no issues wearing these, and I actually thought they were quite comfortable. They're stable enough such that they don't fall out of my ear on their own, and even brushing up against them doesn't call them, cause them to fall out, which is pretty great. I would say that these are in the probably upper 80 or 90th percentile in terms of just how comfortable and good, they, good of a fit they are in the ear. The PI5s have a pretty traditional input method with a single tap being play pause, double tap being for next track, triple tap for previous track, and a touch and hold for assistant. But unfortunately, there's no customization in those controls. While there is a dedicated application, unfortunately, there's no way for you to say, well, I wanna control volume, because there's no volume control on the buds themselves, other than through using the assistant. Now, this generally isn't a problem for me because I've gotten used to those controls, but if you want to have certain custom customizations, unfortunately you're out of luck. Now the PI5s do have their own app, strangely enough just called Headphones, which made it tough to find in my apps list, but it does allow for some customization within the app itself, notably noise cancellation versus audio pass-through, and you can actually listen to soundscapes like a crackling fire, but unfortunately there's no in-depth equalizer control or bass boost or anything along those lines. Unlike just about any other earbuds that I've ever used, you can strangely enough control the device that the earbuds are connected through to through this application. Meaning that for some reason, even if I was using my iPhone, I could tell the earbuds to connect to my Galaxy S21, which is really odd, but I imagine might come in handy from time to time. I frankly didn't use it personally. The Buds sport most of the premium features that we come to expect out of more expensive headphones, including autoplay pause, ANC, audio pass through, wireless charging, just about everything that you'd come to expect, except for maybe spatial audio. The autoplay pause feature is nice to have. Generally, it's nice to be able to just easily take the buds out of your ear to pause the music and then put them in again to play. But oddly enough, unlike most other earbuds, it doesn't save the state of your music. So if I had paused my music, then took the earbuds out and put them back in, it would automatically start playing again. Whereas on most other buds, it's that same sort of scenario, it wouldn't start playing until I pressed play again. So that's just a little bit different, but not too big of a deal. Now, I did notice when I took the earbuds out of my ear, Unfortunately, even though the music would pause, the touch sensor on the bud that was out of my ear would still be active, meaning that if I accidentally touched it once, then it would start playing my music again, which is seems to be a big miss in terms of functionality. And I hope that they can fix this in the software update. The 
ANC, in my mind, was a good feature to have, and I noticed that it would cut out a lot of kind of droning noises, like my air conditioning system. But it wasn't quite as good to the extent that the AirPods Pros are, or it's probably closer on the level to the Galaxy Buds Pros in my experience. Audio pass-through is usually consistent enough as well, but I didn't find myself using it too often because instead of being able to control it from the buds themselves, you have to go into the application in order to control it, along with ANC. So for me, I just by default left ANC on all the time, which means, meant that I really didn't test the audio pass-through too much. Finally, the PI5s also support FastPair, which means when I connected it to any of my Android phones, I was quickly able to transfer it to all of my Android phones or devices which was absolutely excellent. And I think these earbuds control multiple devices a lot better than just about any others or most others on the market. Being $250, you'd expect that the PI5s would have a great sound quality with you know top of the line comp competitive with most other premium earbuds. But frankly, I'm not the best person to review it because I've got a relatively mid to low bar of audio quality for what I think is good sound. In my experience, these are absolutely just as good as the Galaxy Buds Pro or the AirPods Pro or just about any other buds that I experienced, but it really didn't sound that much different. I'd say if I had to assign this, this sounds like a relatively balanced audio profile, but again, I'm not an expert here. I had no problems with this and I didn't feel like I needed to tweak the equalizer in order to get a good sound out of them, but I can't tell you whether that's the same case for you. The noise isolation on these buds is quite good considering they don't feel really, really stiff in your ear. And even with ANC on just about all the time, I didn't notice my earbuds or my ears starting to get like pressure or of any kind, which means that generally I was able to wear these for extended periods of times with no issues whatsoever. The buds are advertised as having four and a half hours of battery life, whereas the case adds another 24 hours. And while I never found myself pushing the 24 hours of case battery, and I only charged it really when I felt like it, the buds themselves, occasionally I would find myself using them for three to four hours and find the battery start to drain. But I never ran out of battery while using these if I started fully topped up. If you're the type of person that wants to listen to music for six hours straight with ANC on, then these might not be the right solution for you. I never found myself really pushing up against that, but if I were using these for video calls, for example, for work, then I might actually be pushing up against those times for many cases. For comparison, I'll compare the PI5s directly against the AirPod Pros themselves since they're very comparable in terms of price. At $250, both of these are quite premium wireless earbuds that get you into the price range of many entry-level phones. But they both offer like the best features that you'd expect out of paying so much. In my experience, the AirPods case is so much smaller, such to the point that I'm really comfortable with slipping this into one of my pockets, whereas this will take up more section space. But I do prefer the design of these buds over the AirPods Pro, just by virtue of how well and comfortably they fit in my ear. In terms of controls, I do prefer the PI5s as well, since they have a more traditional control scheme rather than the squeeze that you'd expect out of the AirPods Pro, and they give you more options for controlling the buds than the AirPods Pro do. For premium features, I'd probably take the AirPods Pro just because the noise cancellation is so good, but I will say that the multi-device connections are significantly better on the PI5s as long as you're not just purely an Apple user. Obviously, the AirPods Pro ability to connect across Apple devices is pretty great, but as someone who owns both Apple and Android and Windows devices, I actually prefer having a pair of buds like the PI5s. While I'm not typically the type of person that would spend $250 on a pair of earbuds, if I absolutely had to, and that would be my primary pair of earbuds, then I would get the PI5s. But I will say that for all my Apple devices, obviously the AirPods Pro are the better solution. And so getting the AirPods Pro with a side pair of Galaxy Buds or something like that, I would prefer that over using just the PI5s. At $250, the PI5s make a big statement, like these are truly pre premium wireless earbuds that compete with the big boys. But in my eyes, they are 
okay. Like, I think they are an absolutely great pair of earbuds, but I don't know if I would really ever stretch to pay $250 for them. In many cases, most of the features that are covered by these are now actually also covered by $150 or even less pairs of earbuds. And I would probably just as easily opt for those as I would for the PI5s. I don't get the additional benefit of audio quality or the premium design. I don't really find a lot of value in that personally. And so for me, the feature set can be achieved with other earbuds and are done just as well. Now, obviously there are some unique features on these like the multi-device connection that is so unique, but in most cases that shouldn't make a big difference. The good news is if you're particularly interested in the PI5s, I will be listing them on my eBay page with a special discount for viewers of the channel. So look in the description if you want more details there. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this review of the PI5s. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and keep an eye out for more videos this week while we continue to cover the weird and wacky buds and the cheap ones and the more premium ones, just about everything. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.